You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. On today's episode, 486, we're going to go through one of our Motivation and Mindset Mondays. And I'm really excited about today's show because I know we've been talking a lot about how we can get well, how we can lose the weight, and we can really age more gracefully, which means with more vitality, with more energy, with more zest, all of those things. But at the same time, none of that really matters if we're not happy, if we don't feel like we've found purpose. And what I want to talk about today, this is a very important topic because I used to live in this space. That was literally, this is who I was, where I didn't feel like I wanted to be tied down with a specific career, relationship, you know, group of whatever it might be. I wanted to feel like I was free, that I could do anything that I wanted. And this is a very illusionary based concept. You know, we just don't want to feel like we have to be forced to wake up at a specific time, that we need anyone telling us what to do. And for me personally, what I found was this, even though I thought that I would be most happy literally living on an island somewhere, sipping on pina coladas, one of those little fantasies, is that that only exists. I mean, those thoughts, those fantasies, they truly only exist in dream states. And I say that because it seems nice thinking about that. It seems like a beautiful thought. It seems very inviting, right? That that's very relaxing to us. But the problem is it doesn't play out in real life. And that's because we don't live a life of solitude. We live in a community of people. And that community of people really is our collective. That is a part of who we are. So there's a lot of people who try to live out those fantasies, who try to go away and just live in a secluded island or wherever it might be. And what they find is that they're not happy. And the reason for this is that when you try to live out what might simply be a beautiful dream... Again, it doesn't play out in reality. And the reason is this, that when you are practicing escapism, you're practicing this so-called freedom, you actually aren't so free after all. Because here's the issue. What you're trapped with are those same exact thoughts of wanting to get away. But why are you wanting to get away? That's the question you really have to ask yourself. What are you leaving? What are you trying to run from? And a lot of times, it's simply that you don't feel like you have a specific destination to get to. Meaning that if you don't have a specific destination that you're trying to move towards, you have nothing to really strive for. And when you don't have anything to strive for, then what are you doing for work on a daily basis? Meaning like, what are you trying to work on or move towards if you don't feel like there is a destination? What is your purpose? And eventually, if you can't find that destination, if you can't find that purpose... This is what leads to a life of depression. It's not the only thing, but this is certainly what leads a lot of people to depression because they lack meaning, because they don't know how their time is supposed to be spent. They don't have a worthy ideal. And so this is why other people, they, you might look at them and they're working 60, 80 hours and you're like, that person has no time for this, this, and this, but they're happy. And why are they happy? Well, they found their destination. And once they know what it is that's making them happy or what they're striving for, it's the striving and the work that creates the happiness. And that's the big thing. So a lot of people believe that wanting to do nothing, that having nothing to do, no job, no relationship, no kids, no anything, they think that's what's going to bring happiness, this freedom. But it's not true. It is actually being in a situation where you are focused on a task that has meaning for you, that's moving to some destination, that you feel like you have perspective and that you have purpose, right? So it's the perspective of saying, okay, I can't necessarily do whatever I want in life, but what I'm doing right now 
is by my choice. It's my doing. And I think this is really a key point because if you're not waking up right now excited to start your day, you're not wanting to wake up early, that you're just looking to snooze through your whole morning, that's a really clear indicator that you may not have found your destination, that you lack a little bit of meaning. And I think that's that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. We've all been there. There's no doubt about it. And sometimes we go through that multiple times in our life. And that's not atypical either. So my recommendation is always this. You know, what can we do to combat that? And this works remarkably well. Meaning that once you start to strive for something, you'll be surprised. Within a week, a lot of that anxiousness, that depression, or that lowered mood, it starts to subside. And it really does because you've chosen an area of your life to improve. And I always give the examples of health. Maybe choose a health aspect that you're striving towards. Spirituality, self-improvement, meaning like how can you improve in some way? What do you have to get better at? For me, a lot of growing up and I grew up in a mentality, a community of judgment. You know, we judged people, good, bad, neutral, whatever it might be, but you're always comparing and contrasting. And that does a real number on your mentality. I'm going to talk about that in the future as well. And that's the unfortunate thing just about a lot of different types of politics and religion. It's always separating groups. It's always judging this person as good or or bad. And when you look at like that, when you look at life like that, you're always then looking at judging yourself as well. So let's try to maybe let's work on that as well. That could be one area of practicing non-judgment. Maybe working on your career. Maybe that is something that gives you great meaning. Not for everyone, but maybe it's something that you're going to strive towards. Okay. What about service? Service to others. What service can you provide? That's an amazing thing. A lot of people think they need to make more money. They need to win an award, whatever it might be. That's not always the case. What are you passionate about? Can that be of service to others? And you can work towards that as well. Relationships. Maybe right now, your partner and yourself need to work on your specific relationship. Or maybe it's a relationship with your parents. Maybe it's a relationship with your children. Maybe it's a relationship with some siblings or your family or friends. Maybe you want to work on that. And just the act of calling up that person. I know it's a foreign concept to call people nowadays, but maybe that. Maybe start it with an email. Be like, hey, do you have time to chat tonight? I wanted to reconnect. And you talk with that person. I'm telling you, that one motion in that right direction can be that snowball that gets you going, that builds that momentum. And then you can invite that person out for a tea or for lunch or for dinner one night. And then you can develop and deepen that relationship further or get back that relationship that you were once missing. Maybe it's just catching up with old friends that you haven't seen in a while. Why not work on that? What I'd like you to do right now or today is simply brainstorm. Think about one or two or three of these things that you would like to work on. And it doesn't have to be from this list. I'm just getting you started. That's all. But choose then just one thing. And remember, we can get overwhelmed when it becomes more than one. You can work on all of these, but choose, choose just one. And then what I would like you to do is also don't just read an article online. Articles don't go deep enough. Buy a book. Look on Amazon. What's one of the better rated books on one of these things that you want to improve upon, right? Practicing non-judgment, practicing meditation, trying to improve nutrition, adrenal any of these things, right? Or what about career? There's a million books written on career. Like just choose your career, type it into Google. You're going to find a book on that, okay? Once you start reading that book, I'm telling you, it does it for me. It does it for a lot of people in my practice that I talk with as well. Once you start going deep into a book like that, it starts to get the brain moving, those gears churning and in the right direction. So basically the act of reading that book, well, the act of journaling, thinking what you want to do, then the act of actually taking your first action. So you just took your first action, you journaled. Second action, you buy the book. Third action, now you're moving forward. You're reading the book. Once you start reading the book, your brain's saying, oh, your subconscious, we've made a commitment to this. Now we're going to take actual action in the real world. We're going to begin to implement that right there. I'm telling you, too many people are searching for happiness. Happiness is not something that can be found. It truly isn't. And I've, I've just, only reason I know that is because I've learned from other brilliant people, also many great mentors, and just going through some really hard times. You don't just catch happiness. Happiness comes as a byproduct. One day, it just sneaks into your life of doing work 
and by work, I don't mean your career necessarily, but it can be, of doing work of service, relationship, working on your health, your body, spirituality, self-improvement in any way. And as you're going about that work and you're developing a plan, which we're talking about, we're reading these books, developing a plan, contacting people, all of a sudden, the happiness is a byproduct of you now having some purpose in your life. And again, you can move from goal to goal, but choose one. Stay focused. All of a sudden, you wake up one day, you're jumping out of bed. You're not looking to snooze because you have things to work towards. All of a sudden, you might just catch yourself smiling for no reason at all. It happens. It really does. And that's the beautiful thing about all of this is that Really, we're not talking about rocket science, right? It's a foreign concept to us because it's not taught in school. We're taught everything but what we really need in life. All the things we're taught, but none of it makes us happy. We're taught about writing. We're taught about algebra. We're taught about a lot of things that less and less, as the years go by and technology increases, have even less bearing in our life. But what about setting goals? What about having purpose? What about doing good work? What about service? What about spirituality? What about self-improvement? What about working on relationships? What about your health? Tell me, are these things ever taught in school? Because I don't personally remember that. Yes, some spirituality, but not really spirituality how I like to think about it. Spirituality in, in schools that I may have gone to as well is just strict religious based. It's, it's specific dogma. And that's great. And if that works for you, then I'm all for it and and keep going with that. But ask yourself, is it working for you? That's very, very important because the spirituality, how I think about it is about being a good person, about practicing non-judgment, about being of service to others, about working on my relationship, about being the best person that I can be for myself to maximize my life, but at the same point then to maximize the lives of others. So what I'm saying right now is start to question a lot of these things we've been taught and that are propagated by the media because the media, as we know, is pretty much bought and paid for by private entities. Be very careful what they are teaching you. Be very careful about what's being said on the news. What I want you to do is think about your own life. Think about really right now, do you feel a sense of freedom, which we talked about in the beginning? And I think you'll find that that sense of freedom is you choosing your destination, you choosing the thing that you want to work towards, and then you finding happiness along the way. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to another Cabral Concept. I truly appreciate each and every one of your listens. Thank you again. I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you, and I mean that. I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. You can find podcast-specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. Head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.